Hey, this is Josh, and this is The Camera Project. In this video, we're reviewing the Spider 5 Capture Pro system. The tools will help you to calibrate both at the shooting level and at the editing level because it works for both raw photo editing as well as for calibrating your computer monitor. Now, when I created this channel, I swore to myself that I'd never be the guy sitting at a computer demoing something about a camera. Well, this is kind of different because I'm demoing something about a computer calibration. So I'm the guy sitting at a computer. I've already actually taken out the Spider 5 Elite and that's the monitor calibration portion of this whole tool set. So we're gonna run through it. I haven't done this before, but I have already plugged it in, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. We're gonna follow the on-screen steps and see what it tells us to do. Have you allowed for your display to warm up for a half hour? I have. Have you checked that no intense light is falling directly on your screen? Well, because of that, I'm gonna shut off my video lights and uh, just leave it to somewhat darkness. I'll adjust the video settings so it becomes a little brighter anyway. It also asks if you reset your display controls. I'm on an iMac. I did check earlier that I really didn't mess with the defaults and I haven't. And it also says, is your spider connected to your computer? It is. So it is a desktop I'm calibrating and it already knows it's an Apple iMac. All right, so in terms of the calibration settings, honestly, I don't really know what they should be but it has recommended settings and I'm just gonna let it go with it. So hit next. And then it says it's gonna place your spider on the display as shown. The way it works is there's a cap for the Spider 5 I have already taken off and that essentially works as a counterweight behind the screen. So you do that and then the tricky part is it wants it to lie flat against your screen and I have an iMac and it's not all that tiltable, but basically what they suggest to do is tilt your screen back until it lies flat. So I need to make sure it's lying as flat as possible. And maybe I could adjust the counterweight to help with that. And yeah, that seems to be fairly flat there. All right, let's continue. All right, I'm gonna hit the next icon and it seems like it's just gonna do its thing. So yeah, I'll probably speed through this a little bit in the video, but it seems like it's flashing different combinations of white and black, and I'm sure they'll get some colors in there too. I... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so now as instructed, I'm removing the spider and I'm clicking the word finish. So it's asking me to name my new profile. I'm gonna call it Apple iMac Spider, but I'm gonna spell that right and hit save. Your new profile has been created and your system will automatically use this new profile. Yeah, so there's a way to view the calibrated and uncalibrated results in the software. And if you switch back and forth, at first it doesn't seem that drastic, but then if you pay closer attention, there's definitely a big brightness difference um, especially to the white point, but also to the black, actually. Reds are being rendered very differently. Um, I mean, a little bit in every color, but I notice it most kind of in that top left square in the reds. So yeah, it seems like it's worked. I guess I'm done. All right, so seemingly I've calibrated my monitor. It wasn't really difficult. It took me about 10 or 15 minutes, most of which I wasn't really doing anything. And yeah, it was an easy process all around. So assuming that I'm happy with the results given a little more viewing time, it seems pretty painless. Now they do recommend you do it about once a month. So yeah, we'll see if I could keep up with it. Uh, but there's actually a reminder it'll give you. So yeah, if you have the system, you might as well just plug it back in, have it recalibrate your monitor in case anything's changed and know that you're working on a calibrated display. Up next, we'll probably take a look at the Spider Checker and Spider Cube. I think those are to help you calibrate your color and white balance, but also your contrast. 
And uh, that's more the shooting end of it. So we'll go into that next. I know you're supposed to do your monitor first so that you can be sure that you're viewing a calibrated result when you're actually editing. All right, we'll take a look at that one next. Okay, so now that we've calibrated the screen, we're gonna test the next part of the Spider 5 Capture Pro Kit, and that's the Spider Checker. Now this is the part that a lot of you will be really interested in. If I go into Lightroom and I hit E, you'll see the picture that I took of basically this color chart that's provided. Now I did a couple of things wrong here on purpose. I shot it at kind of an off angle, and I also set with a custom white balance that's probably incorrect for the scene that I'm in. I set it to fluorescent just because I knew that my lights were not fluorescent. This would be a more ideal photo where it's more straight on, but I wanna use the sort of not ideal situation just so we could test it for that. So let's go ahead and test out how it works when using the spider checker. Now it's important that you're shooting in raw and then we're gonna go ahead and calibrate based on using this. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop my image and I'm gonna crop it to roughly the size of my checker here. Something like that. I'm also going to go ahead and just kind of fix my uprights. So again, I should have shot this straight on, but I want to shoot in incorrect test just so we could test that workflow. So if I go to the transform tab and let's just see what auto does. It does a pretty good job, but let's try to do a guided and I'll just set them manually. So I could just set that as one, even though it's slightly bent. And I'm going to do this one here. And then I want to do this one here. And that seems okay, but it's messed up my crop. So I'm going to go back to my crop and just correct that. And then I'm going to crop it down. So they provide these little white marks here in the corner. So I'm going to basically just crop to them. You could use Camera Raw for this as well. And as of the documentation, they also seem to support Hasselblad Focus as well. I tend to use Lightroom, so that's what I'm gonna show you guys here. They recommend shooting it a little bit wider than you need it because the sweet spot of your lens will be toward the center and then doing this crop after the fact to those white dots. So now we need to do some basic adjustments here in Lightroom. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna select the white balance and they recommend using the patch E2 here. Now that I take a look at it, I'm gonna just move my crop out a hair so I could see those numbers and move it up a hair just so I could see those letters as well. Okay, so I used E2 to pick my white balance like that. The next step is to do my exposure adjustment. And for that, I'm gonna use the white patch, which is E1. And if you mouse over it, you'll see that I'm getting RGB values around 85%. We want that to be at 90%, which means I'm slightly underexposed. So that means I need to adjust my exposure slider a hair till I'm closer to 90% there. It's getting pretty close. Yeah, and that's right about 90% there. So that's pretty good. And the next thing I need to do is adjust my black point. And for that, I'm gonna go over E6 and check out those values. Now I want this to be at around 4% RGB value. And right now I'm around six or 7%. So we're gonna go over to the black point and adjust that. Getting closer. A little bit too low, maybe. That's pretty close. All right, that's pretty damn close right there. So let's keep going. Now we need to handle the color aspect of this. So I'm gonna go up to Photo, Edit In, Edit In Spider Checker, Edit a Copy with Lightroom Adjustments, And then I need to come in here and just move these targets so they're basically over the center of these. Now this is pretty good right away, but just so you would see how it would work, I could just drag this and configure it so it's fitting really close. 
Okay, so now there are three modes I can use for the analysis. There's saturation, they describe that as providing a boost in saturation, and it offers results that are generally more pleasing for many types of images. Colorimetric mode, which provides the most literal results, best when attempting to reproduce artwork and color critical work. And then there's portrait mode, which selectively reduces the color saturation of skin tone components to make portrait processing easier. Now, because this is sort of like a product shot, let's just say, of that pillow, I'm going to use the color metric mode. And then I'm just going to make sure these targets are still looking good. They are. And I'm going to hit save calibration. And I'm going to call this pillow color correct. Hit OK. It says after you quit spider checker, you must relaunch Lightroom to use. I'm going to hit quit. I'm going to quit out of Lightroom. And now I've relaunched Lightroom. Now I should see a preset there. And here is one that says pillow color correct. So let's talk about how to use this new preset that comes in. Now the documentation for this would suggest that you just come in here and click on this pillow color correct. And that would be correct for this example where I've already done the basic adjustments by picking the white balance and adjusting the blacks and whites. But if I were to come over to this image that I shot more straight on and I was to just apply that pillow color correct, well that's not touching my exposure or my blacks or my whites or anything along those lines and it's not touching my white balance. You'll notice this is 4370 whereas this one is 2929. So really I think the correct way to apply this would be to come in, click to apply this user preset, pillow color correct, then hit copy. Make sure things like local adjustments and transform are not on, crop is not on, then you hit copy, then you come over to this new image, you hit paste, and that actually brings over your new setting. And if you want, you could actually save that out as a new preset. So I could come over here to presets and hit create preset and make sure to include everything other than things like transform, pillow, color, correct, and white balance. And then I could come back and reset this to its default settings, restore Adobe default settings. I just hit option to get that setting. I could hit a regular reset. Okay, so I've restored that to basically where I started. And then if I want to apply the new preset, I can just come click here and you'll see it's corrected my image properly. This is the before if I hit backslash and that's the after, before, after. So next we're going to move on to the spider cube. Now I'm not exactly sure why you would use this if you also have the spider checker. Maybe it's a little bit more portable. Maybe it's giving you a little bit more contrast information and a bit more of an environmental reading from the chrome ball. I'm not really sure. But basically what this is giving you is both a white balance reference and also a black, white, gray reference, which we'll go through now. So first thing you want to do when you're using the spider cube is take a picture of it and you want to make sure that this chrome ball is visible, that you have the gray faces up here visible, the white faces over here, and then you have a black side down here with what they call the black trap, which is the uh, darker black hole here. So we're going to go ahead and go through how they recommend configuring everything. And then you could apply all of that data to other shots shot under the same lighting conditions. For instance, you would take it out of your scene and then shoot something like this. Now this isn't a very pretty scene or anything like that. And I do have a different aperture value here. It should be more or less the same color balance and everything like that. So first thing I want to do is if I'm in Lightroom, I could hit J. And what that's going to do is turn on my out of gamut warnings for black and white values just to show you how that would work if I were to bring the exposure up really high, you'd see I'd start to get some blown out whites on my cube here. And if I just brought it down a bunch, you'd see that I have basically pure black in certain areas. So what they recommend doing first is putting on those exposure warnings and taking a look at your histogram values. And then you would go ahead and you would zoom in to your cube. Now they want you to do a white balance picker on your brighter of your two gray sides. 
Now it's a pretty rainy, cloudy day right now, so mine are pretty evenly lit, but I'd say this right one is a hair brighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the white balance from there because that's essentially where my light source is coming from, the side that is brighter. So I pick that and you'll see if I hit backslash, a very slight adjustment to my white balance. If I go back to before I did it, You'd see I was at 6,025 before, and now I'm at 6,223. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and adjust the exposure so there's no out of gamut warnings on the white, which I already don't have any out of gamut warnings, but I want to adjust my whites to be just below 100%, maybe around 96%, and I'm actually pretty close. Uh, if I look at my RGB values here, when I come back over here, they're right around 96, so I'm pretty good. Maybe I'll bring it up just 0.1 or so and see what that does. Yeah, that's good, right around 96%. And then the next thing I wanna do is make my black trap here just around 100% black. So that would essentially read as zero. And again, I'm pretty right on there, but yeah, I could adjust my black values just so it's very close to that zero marker. And then the next thing I wanna do from the cube here is get a clean definition between the black face here and the black trap. So I'm gonna hit J, shut off the warnings, and I'm gonna bring my shadows up till I have a much clearer definition. Now this is something that you'll do to taste. So I'm gonna say right around 39 here looks good, zoom out. And if I'm looking at its effect on the whole image, I think that's maybe a little too much. Again, this is to taste. They just say a clear definition. They don't say exactly what that means. So maybe I'll go somewhere right around 25. And then all I have to do is copy this data from this picture. And I'll just make sure transform's not on, crop's not on, local adjustment's not on. And I'll take it over to my hero image, which is not a very nice image. And then I'll hit paste and see what it does to my image. Now you'll see it changed my white balance, my blacks, my highlights, my shadows, things like that. And all those adjustments that I made on the cube are now applied to this one. The last tool in the Spider 5 Capture Pro is the lens calibration tool. And that's essentially to do micro adjustments to the focusing in your camera. I'm shooting with a mirrorless camera where lens micro adjustments are usually not a problem or not really even too much of a thing. So I'm not gonna use that, but if you do have a DSLR where you can do lens micro adjustments, it's definitely a good idea to perform that, but I won't be going through that today. All in all, my thoughts on the Spider 5 Capture Pro system, I would say it's a really great system. I think especially the Spider 5 Elite and the Spider Checker are two essential tools. Essentially, you're calibrating your monitor with the Spider 5 Elite to make sure you have accurate color rep representation that you could have consistent across multiple monitors. And with the Spider Checker, you're getting accurate color and that's really important especially if you're shooting with different types of cameras let's say you're shooting a wedding and you have a nikon and a canon or a sony and a nikon or an olympus well you want to be able to get consistent colors across them and the camera's built-in profiles are not going to be consistent so if you really want a consistent image you shoot under the same lighting condition at the same moment you take your Nikon and you take your Canon and you shoot those two images and then you can get this image that looks pretty much exactly the same across two different cameras and I think that's great. Even if you're just on one camera, it's giving you a standard for your colors. And if you are shooting any kind of product photography, food photography, where it's just super important for it to just be spot on accurate, well then it is clutch to be able to do something like this. And I highly recommend this product. I'd like to thank the people over at Data Color who sent me the product to review. And if you guys like this review, please leave a comment. We could do more Lightroom and things like that. And please let me know. Also, as always, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it.